together. Uh, we cannot afford to be divided. If we want to be successful, we need to be strong and to be united. And all our efforts in the last few years have been uh, geared toward that. Obviously, each country has a different situation. The management of lymphedema in Sweden is not the same as the management in lymphed of lymphedema in the UK or in France or anywhere else in the world because the health authorities are organized differently. But it is only by acting through a national lymphedema framework that I believe, and there are few of us uh, like that, that we will be able to change things. Now, that, those 10 steps are in the document which I think you had from, from last year and um, is, is available on our website, etc. And is somehow based on an experience we have had of seeing countries wanting to change the, or to improve the management of lymphedema uh, in uh, where they are. First of all, is that you need that recognition of the, uh, the, the need to improve the management of lymphedema. You can do it different ways here, but I think it's a common agreement that uh, in every country, lymphedema management could or should be improved. Once you have come to that conclusion, the second step is the creation of a core team of individuals willing to tackle the issues and ready to give some of their time and energy. And this is the stage where we are in most countries because there's a, always a core of individuals. It could be practitioners, it could be patients, it could be researchers, it could be a mix of all of these, but there is very often that creation of a, of a core team. The third step is identification of all the stakeholders. And that, seem, or that could be seen as the easiest part, but believe me, it is not. Because even in, uh, I'll take the, the example of the French uh, Society of Lymphology, a couple of years ago, they said, well, we are not even capable of saying who is treating lymphedema, who is treating lymphedema uh, in 80% of France. They didn't know where lymphedema centers were uh, in, in their own country. So that seems the easiest. It is not. And uh, the main danger is that people will focus on the people they know, their friends. And they will uh, say, OK, now we have 12 of us. That's, so, that's OK. We are a group. No, you have to go much further and say, who actually sees patients? And are they patients' groups, for example, et cetera. So you, it could be a small group, but you have to identify all these, uh, all these people. The fourth step is the strengthening, strengthening of the core team with representative of all stakeholders. And that is, believe me, we live it, uh, we see it uh, currently in a couple of countries. This is the big, big, big challenge. Because some of them, will say, no, no, I've been working in lymphedema for 40 years. I know everything. Uh, I don't need you to improve the management of lymphedema. Uh, or things like, um, yes, OK, I do want to join your group, but I don't want that person to be part of that group. And, and you start into the politics. And that is probably the, the biggest challenge, or one of the biggest challenges you will have in setting up a national framework. The fifth step is what we call a foundation meeting, is that you need to get all these stakeholders into one room and make sure you share the same goals and the same vision. And you start talking about the legal status of the national framework, who is going to lead it, how is it going to be represented, etc. And uh, then, 
you move on to the next stage, which is what we call the stakeholders open space meeting. Um, I have just a bit of time uh, to explain to you the, in 2002, the open space meeting for the UK framework. 250 people showed up. And we were asked to go into groups of four people, but with just one instruction saying, please sit down with people you don't know. So you couldn't sit with your friends or people you knew. You had to sit down with people you didn't know and find out who they were and uh, what stakeholder they were representing. And it was very good because there was a good mix of practitioners, patients, and industry people. And my first group, I was with four of us, was, um, for example, there was a father of an 11-year-old girl with lymphedema. His first question, first, not attack, because it wasn't an attack, but was to say, look, my girl is going to be a teenager very soon. She will want to wear fashionable stockings. She doesn't want to wear these gray, beige, uh, thick things. Why don't you do, uh, I was in industry at that time, I remember you, uh, why don't you do colorful stockings, etc. And I had to explain to him that the manufacturing of a proper compression garment is not something that, uh, it's not mass production. It takes a lot of time. And uh, the quantities have nothing to do with. So uh, with what the normal stockings that are sold uh, everywhere in supermarkets. So the manufacturers needed sometimes, and some uh, making sure the demand was strong enough to develop new products. I'm sure he did not necessarily like my answer, but at least he learned something. And I did learn something, uh, which obviously I, uh, I could find out, is that, yes, beige stockings are not necessarily the ultimate thing for, for everybody. And you need to try to match the, the, the demand. And the whole day was built around that so that we could identify all the issues and barriers in the management of lymphedema in the UK and that we could start working on possible solutions and synergies. And from that meeting, we could define a roadmap with the priorities, the agenda, the working groups, uh, the definition of adaptation for, uh, for the best practice document, and definition of deadlines and deliverable. We could f find out what we had to do and what uh, we should be working uh, towards. I would say the rest is management of a project and uh, working on within your healthcare system, making sure you have, you bring to the state the right recommendations. What I always say is that if the, in the UK the practitioners had gone directly to the healthcare authorities, they would have brought them a problem, defending their own interest. If a patient had gone directly, it would have brought a problem to the state, to the healthcare authorities. By working together before, we brought them a solution. And it's very easy to say no to problems or to show you that uh, no, we can't change because of this or that. If you bring a solution to someone, then it's very hard to say no because whichever angle you try to attack it from, it has been studied and the answer is in the document, is in the recommendation. So in the recommendation we brought to the healthcare authorities in the UK, uh, it couldn't be attacked from a patient's point of view, because patients had been involved. It could be, couldn't be attacked from the practitioner's point of view, because they had been involved. It couldn't have been attacked from a cost efficiency point of view, because we had worked on that. So we brought to them a solution, and that's what you have to define within your healthcare system and the existing problems. And then, you need to deliver the strategy. And the last step, and not the least important, 
is make sure that you measure the outcomes. What effect our recommendations have had on to management of lymphedema? Is it really better or not? Uh, we measure the cost. How much did it cost before? How much does it cost now? Uh, Etc. So keep on measuring uh, the outcomes so that you can try then to, in a second stage, implement or improve it again uh, as more as you can. Now, you will have a lot of hurdles and challenges in implementing a national frameworks in Sweden, like in every country. First one you might have is the meaning of consensus. Do people agree? Yes, sometimes they do. But how do they agree? What is consensus? Territorial issues. Air compression bandages are your field. Ignorance, lack of funding, ignorance. I don't care what you say, you've got. It ain't defined as lymphedema in here. Lack of funding, lymphedema research, please give generously. And last but not least, and I think it's a touchy subject in Sweden, the resistance to engaging all stakeholders. Just an average Saturday night seminar, tonight engaging your patients. No patients behind this point. Down this corner.